Part two of Agamemnon by Aeschylus, translated by Edmund Doidge Anderson Morshead, eighteen forty nine to nineteen twelve. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part two. The chorus continues. Therefore, for each and all the city's breast is heavy with a wrath suppressed as deep and deadly as a curse more loud flung by the common crowd and brooding deeply doth my soul await tidings of coming fate buried as yet in darkness womb for not forgetful is the high god's doom against the sons of carnage all too long seems the unjust to prosper and be strong till the dark furies come and smite with stern reversal all his home down into dim obstruction he is gone and help and hope among the lost is none or him who vaunteth an exceeding fame impends a woe condign the vengeful bolt upon his eyes doth flame sped from the hand divine this bliss be mine ungrudged of god to feel to tread no city to the dust nor see my own life thrust down to a slave's estate beneath another's heel behold throughout the city wide have the swift feet of rumour hide roused by the joyful flame but is the news they scatter sooth or haply do they give for truth some cheat which heaven doth frame a child were he and all unwise who let his heart with joy be stirred to see the beacon fires arise and then beneath some thwarting word sicken anon with hope deferred the edge of woman's insight still good news from true divideth ill light rumours leap within the bound that fences female credence round but lightly born as lightly dies the tale that springs of her surmise soon shall we know whereof the balefires tell the beacons kindled with transmitted flame whether as well i deem their tale is true or whether like some dream delusive came the welcome blaze but to befool our soul for lo i see a herald from the shore draw hither shadowed with the olive wreath and thirsty dust twin brother of the clay speaks plain of travel far and truthful news no dumb surmise nor tongue of flame and smoke fitfully kindled from the mountain pyre but plainlier shall his voice say all is well or but away forebodings adverse now and on fair promise fair fulfilment come and whoso for the state prays otherwise himself reap harvest of his ill desire enter herald o oh, land of argos fatherland of mine to thee at last beneath the tenth year's sun my feet return the bark of my emprise though one by one hope's anchors broke away held by the last and now rides safely here long long my soul despaired to win in death its longed-for rest within our argive land and now all hail o earth and hail to thee new risen sun and hail our country's god high ruling zeus and thou the pythian lord whose arrows smote us once smite thou no more was not thy wrath wreaked full upon our heads o king apollo by scamander's side turn thou be turned be saviour healer now and hail all gods who rule the street and mart and hermes hail my patron and my pride herald of heaven and lord of heralds here and heroes ye who sped us on our way to one and all i cry receive again with grace such argives as the spear has spared ah home of royalty beloved halls and solemn shrines and gods that front the morn benign as erst with sun-flushed aspect greet the king returning after many days for as from night flash out the beams of day so out of darkness dawns a light a king on you on argos agamemnon comes then hail and greet him well such meed befits him whose right hand hewed down the towers of troy with the great axe of zeus who righteth wrong and smote the plain smote down to nothingness each altar every shrine and far and wide dies from the whole land's face its offspring fair such mighty yoke of fate he set on troy our lord and monarch atreus elder son 
and comes at last with blissful honour home highest of all who walk on earth to-day not paris nor the city's self that paid sin's price with him can boast whate'er befall the guerdon we have won outweighs it all but at fate's judgment seat the robber stands condemned of rapine and his prey is torn forth from his hands and by his deed is reaped a bloody harvest of his home and land gone down to death and for his guilt and lust his father's race pays double in the dust chorus hail herald of the greeks new come from war herald all hail not death itself can fright me now chorus was thine heart wrung with longing for thy land herald so that this joy doth brim mine eyes with tears chorus on you too then this sweet distress did fall herald how sayst thou make me master of thy word chorus you long for us who pine for you again herald craved the land us who craved it love for love chorus yea till my brooding heart moaned out with pain herald whence thy despair that mars the army's joy chorus sole cure of wrong is silence saith the saw herald thy kings afar couldst thou fear other men chorus death had been sweet as thou didst say but now herald tis true fate smiles at last throughout our toil these many years some chances issued fair and some i wot were chequered with a curse but who on earth hath won the bliss of heaven through time's whole tenor and unbroken wheel i could a tale unfold of toiling oars ill rest scant landings on a shore rock strewn all pains all sorrows for our daily doom and worse and hatefuler are woes on land for where we couched close by the foeman's wall the river plain was ever dank with dews dropped from the sky exuded from the earth a curse that clung unto our sodden garb and hair as horrent as a wild beast fell why tell the woes of winter when the birds lay stark and stiff so stern was ida's snow or summer's scorch what time the stirless wave sank to its sleep beneath the noonday sun why mourn old woes their pain has passed away and passed away from those who fell all care for evermore to rise and live again why sum the count of death and render thanks for life by moaning over fate malign farewell a long farewell to all our woes to us the remnant of the host of greece comes wheel beyond all counterpoise of woe thus boast we rightfully to yonder sun like him far fleeted over sea and land the argive host prevailed to conquer troy and in the temples of the gods of greece hung up these spoils a shining sign to time let those who learn this legend bless aright the city and its chieftains and repay the meed of gratitude to zeus who willed and wrought the deed so stands the tale fulfilled chorus thy words o'erbear my doubt for news of good the ear of age hath ever youth and now but those within and clytemnestra's self would fain hear all glad thou their ears and mine re-enter clytemnestra last night when first the fiery courier came in sign that troy is ta'en and raised to earth so wild a cry of joy my lips gave out that i was chidden hath the beacon watch made sure unto thy soul the sack of troy a very woman thou whose heart leaps light at wandering rumours and with words like these they showed me how i strayed misled of hope yet on each shrine i set the sacrifice and in the strain they held for feminine went heralds through the city to and fro with voice of loud proclaim announcing joy and in each fane they lit and quenched with wine the spicy perfumes fading in the flame all is fulfilled i spare your longer tale the king himself anon shall tell me all remains to think what honour best may greet my lord the majesty of argos home what day beams fairer on a woman's eyes than this whereon she flings the portals wide to hail her lord heaven shielded home from war this to my husband that he tarry not but turn the city's longing into joy yea let him come 
and coming may he find a wife no other than he left her true and faithful as a watchdog to his home his foeman's foe in all her duties leal trusty to keep for ten long years unmarred the store whereon he set his master seal be steel deep dyed before ye look to see ill joy ill fame from other wight in me herald tis fairly said thus speaks a noble dame nor speaks amiss when truth informs the boast exit clytemnestra chorus so has she spoken be it yours to learn by clear interpreters her specious word turn to me herald tell me if anon the second well-loved lord of argos comes hath menelaus safely sped with you herald alas brief boon unto my friends it were to flatter them for truth with falsehoods fair chorus speak joy if truth be joy but truth at worst too plainly truth and joy are here divorced herald the hero and his bark were wrapped away far from the grecian fleet tis truth i say chorus whether in all men's sight from ilion born or from the fleet by stress of weather torn herald full on the mark thy shaft of speech doth light and one short word hath told long woes aright chorus but say what now of him each comrade saith what their forebodings of his life or death herald ask me no more the truth is known to none save the earth fostering all surveying sun chorus say by what doom the fleet of greece was driven how rose how sank the storm the wrath of heaven herald nay ill it were to mar with sorrow's tale the day of blissful news the gods demand thanksgiving sundered from solicitude if one as herald came with rueful face to say the curse has fallen and the host gone down to death and one wide wound has reached the city's heart and out of many homes many are cast and consecrate to death beneath the double scourge that ares loves the bloody pair the fire and sword of doom if such sore burden weighed upon my tongue twere fit to speak such words as gladden fiends but coming as he comes who bringeth news of safe return from toil and issues fair to men rejoicing in a wheel restored dare i to dash good words with ill and say how the god's anger smote the greeks in storm for fire and sea that erst held bitter feud now swore conspiracy and pledged their faith wasting the argives worn with toil and war night and great horror of the rising wave came o'er us and the blasts that blow from thrace clashed ship with ship and some with plunging prow through scudding drifts of spray and raving storm vanished as strays by some ill shepherd driven and when at length the sun rose bright we saw the aegean sea-field flecked with flowers of death corpses of grecian men and shattered hulls for us indeed some god as well i deem no human power laid hand upon our helm snatched us or prayed us from the powers of air and brought our bark through all unharmed in hull and saving fortune sat and steered us fair so that no surge should gulf us deep in brine nor grind our keel upon a rocky shore so scaped we death that lurks beneath the sea but under day's white light mistrustful all of fortune's smile we sat and brooded deep shepherds forlorn of thoughts that wandered wild o'er this new woe for smitten was our host and lost as ashes scattered from the pyre of whom if any draw his life-breath yet be well assured he deems of us as dead as we of him no other fate forebode but heaven save all if menelaus live he will not tarry but will surely come therefore if anywhere the high sun's ray descries him upon earth preserved by zeus who wills not yet to wipe his race away hope still there is that homeward he may wend enough thou hast the truth unto the end chorus say from whose lips the presage fell who read the future all too well and named her in her natal hour helen the bride with war for dower twas one of the invisible guiding his tongue with prescient power on fleet and host and citadel war sprung from her and death did lower when from the bride-bed's fine-spun veil she to the zephyr spread her sail 
strong blew the breeze the surge closed o'er the cloven track of keel and oar but while she fled there drove along fast in her wake a mighty throng a thirst for blood a thirst for war forward in fell pursuit they sprung then leapt on simoy's bank ashore the leafy coppices among no rangers they of wood and field but huntsmen of the sword and shield heaven's jealousy that works its will sped thus on troy its destined ill well named at once the bride and bane and loud rang out the bridal strain but they to whom that song befell did turn anon to tears again zeus tarries but avenges still the husband's wrong the household stain he the hearth's lord brooks not to see its outraged hospitality even now and in far other tone troy chants her dirge of mighty moan woe upon paris woe and hate who wooed his country's doom for mate this is the burthen of the groan wherewith she wails disconsolate the blood so many of her own have poured in vain to fend her fate troy thou hast fed and freed to roam a lion cub within thy home a suckling creature newly tamed from mother's teat still fully fain of nursing care and oft caressed within the arms upon the breast even as an infant has it lain or fawns and licks by hunger pressed the hand that will assuage its pain in life's young dawn a well-loved guest a fondling for the children's play a joy unto the old and grey but waxing time and growth betrays the bloodthirst of the lion race and for the house's fostering care unbidden all it revels there and bloody recompense repays rent flesh of kind its talons tear a mighty beast that slays and slays and mars with blood the household fair a god-sent pest invincible a minister of fate and hell even so to ilian city came by stealth a spirit as of windless seas and skies a gentle phantom form of joy and wealth with love's soft arrows speeding from its eyes love's rose whose thorn doth pierce the soul in subtle wise ah well a day the bitter bridal bed when the fair mischief lay by paris side what curse on pallas and on people sped with her the fury sent on priam's pride by angered zeus what tears of many a widowed bride long long ago to mortals this was told how sweet security and blissful state have curses for their children so men hold and for the man of all too prosperous fate springs from a bitter seed some woe insatiate alone alone i deem far otherwise not bliss nor wealth it is but impious deed from which that aftergrowth of ill doth rise woe springs from wrong the plant is like the seed while right in honour's house doth its own likeness breed some past impiety some grey old crime breeds the young curse that wantons in our ill early or late when haps the appointed time and out of light brings power of darkness still a master fiend a foe unseen invincible a pride accursed that broods upon the race and home in which dark ate holds her sway sin's child and woes that wears its parent's face while right in smoky cribs shines clear as day and decks with wheel his life who walks the righteous way from gilded halls that hands polluted rays right turns away with proud averted eyes and of the wealth men stamp amiss with praise heedless to poorer holier temples highs and to fate's goal guides all in its appointed wise hail to thee chief of atreus race returning proud from troy subdued how shall i greet thy conquering face how nor a fulsome praise obtrude nor stint the meed of gratitude for mortal men who fall to ill take little heed of open truth but seek unto its semblance still the show of weeping and of ruth to the forlorn will all men pay but of the grief their eyes display naught to the heart doth pierce its way and with the joy as they beguile their lips into a feigned smile and force a joy unfelt the while but he who as a shepherd wise doth know his flock can ne'er misread truth in the falsehood of his eyes who veils beneath a kindly guise a lukewarm love indeed and thou our leader 
when of yore thou badest Greece go forth to war for Helen's sake, I dare avow that then I held thee not as now, that to my vision thou didst seem died in the hues of disesteem. I held thee for a pilot ill, and reckless of thy proper will, endowing others doomed to die with vain and forced audacity. Now from my heart, ungrudgingly, to those that wrought this word be said, well fall the labour ye have sped. Let time and search, O king, declare what men within thy city's bound were loyal to the kingdom's care, and who were faithless found. Enter Agamemnon in a chariot, accompanied by Cassandra. He speaks without descending. Agamemnon. First, as is meet, a king's all hail be said to Argos and the gods that guard the land. Gods who with me availed to speed us home, with me availed to wring from Priam's town the due of justice. In the court of heaven the gods in conclave sat and judged the cause. Not from a pleader's tongue, and at the close unanimous into the urn of doom, this sentence gave on Ilion and her men death, and where hope drew nigh to pardon's urn, no hand there was to cast a vote therein. And still the smoke of fallen Ilion rises in sight of all men, and the flame of Ate's hecatomb is living yet, and where the towers in dusty ashes sink, rise the rich fumes of pomp and wealth consumed. For this must all men pay unto the gods the meed of mindful hearts and gratitude. For by our hands the meshes of revenge closed on the prey, and for one woman's sake Troy trodden by the Argive monster lies, the foal, the shielded band that leapt the wall, what time with autumn sank the Pleiades. Yea, o'er the fencing wall a lion sprang ravening and lapped his fill of blood of kings. Such prelude spoken to the gods in full, to you I turn, and to the hidden thing whereof ye spake but now. And in that thought I am as you, and what ye say, say I. For few are they who have such inborn grace as to look up with love and envy not, when stands another on the height of wheel, deep in his heart, whom jealousy hath seized, for poison lurking doth enhance his load, for now beneath his proper woes he chafes, and sighs withal to see another's wheel. I speak not idly, but from knowledge sure there be who vaunt in utter loyalty, that is, but as the ghost of friendship dead, a shadow in a glass of faith gone by one only he who went reluctant forth across the seas with me odysseus he was loyal unto me with strength and will a trusty trace-horse bound unto my car thus be he yet beneath the light of day or dead as well i fear i speak his praise lastly whate'er be due to men or gods with joint debate in public council held we will decide and warily contrive that all which now is well may so abide. For that which haply needs the healer's art, that will we medicine, discerning well if cautery or knife befit the time. Now, to my palace and the shrines of home, I will pass in and greet you first and fair, ye gods who bade me forth and home again, and long may victory tarry in my train. Enter Clytemnestra, followed by maidens bearing purple robes. Clytemnestra. Old men of Argos, lieges of our realm, shame shall not bid me shrink, lest ye should see the love I bear my lord. Such blushing fear dies at the last from hearts of humankind. From mine own soul and from no alien lips, I know and will reveal the life I bore, reluctant through the lingering live-long years, the while my lord beleaguered Ilion's wall. First, that a wife sat sundered from her lord in widowed solitude was utter woe. And woe to hear how rumors many tongues all boded evil. Woe when he who came and he who followed spake of ill on ill, keening lost, lost, all lost through hall and bower. Had this my husband met so many wounds, as by a thousand channels rumour told, no network e'er was full of holes as he. Had he been slain as oft as tidings came that he was dead, he well might boast him now a second Gurion of triple frame. 
with triple robe of earth above him laid for that below no matter triply dead dead by one death for every form he bore and thus distraught by news of wrath and woe oft for self-slaughter had i slung the noose but others wrenched it from my neck away hence haps it that orestes thine and mine the pledge and symbol of our wedded troth stands not beside us now as he should stand nor marvel thou at this he dwells with one who guards him loyally tis phocus king strophius who warned me erst bethink thee queen what woes of doubtful issue well may fall thy lord in daily jeopardy at troy while here a populace uncurbed may cry down with the council down bethink thee too tis the world's way to set a harder heel on fallen power for thy child's absence then such mine excuse no wily afterthought for me long since the gushing fount of tears is wept away no drop is left to shed dim are the eyes that ever watch till dawn weeping the bale-fires piled for thy return night after night unkindled if i slept each sound the tiny humming of a gnat roused me again again from fitful dreams wherein i felt thee smitten saw thee slain thrice for each moment of mine hour of sleep all this i bore and now released from woe i hail my lord as watchdog of a fold as saving stay-rope of a storm-tossed ship as column stout that holds the roof aloft as only child unto a sire bereaved as land beheld past hope by crews forlorn as sunshine fair when tempest's wrath is past as gushing spring to thirsty wayfarer so sweet it is to scape the press of pain with such salute i bid my husband hail nor heaven be wroth therewith for long and hard i bore that ire of old sweet lord step forth step from thy car i pray nay not on earth plant the proud foot o king that trod down troy women why tarry ye whose task it is to spread your monarch's path with tapestry swift swift with purple strew his passage fair that justice lead him to a home at last he scarcely looked to see for what remains zeal unsubdued by sleep shall nerve my hand to work as right and as the gods command end of part two recording by expatriate in bangor maine